My name is Timothy Walker. I'm a maritime security researcher here at the Institute for Security Studies in the Peace Operations and Peace Building Division. And today I'll be discussing the um, dominance of piracy in maritime security discussions and how, firstly, we need to guard against being too piracy-centric in terms of how we construct our future maritime security needs and mechanisms. So I start off by having a slide on African agency. Um, each logo here and each um, picture is a representation of a, an African regional organization, the African Union, and various initiatives which have come up together with a set of maritime uh, focused strategies and codes, if not focused particularly or um, completely on security, about doing things like fighting piracy, about fighting illegal fishing, and also building capacity. Uh, by that I mean having um, increased naval capacity, so for instance to patrol or to tear against uh, criminals, but also then to have the onshore capability, um, law enforcement, but also development, uh, making sure that there is increased maritime opportunity in industry and uh, development, which can lead to economic livelihoods being enhanced, protected, and also wealth being generated. Um, of the, of the logos here, we have ECOWAS, ECAS, EGAD, and SADAC. Um, I, I take it as a, given that uh, the people watching are familiar with, uh, with each of the regional organizations. And the African Union in the center. Um, each regional strategy is designed or was written in a way to secure and protect the region's own needs and, and requirements, but also to be aligned with each other and aligned underneath this African Union strategy, the AIM strategy. Uh, beneath the AIM strategy is Agenda 2063. Now that is the development plan for the African Union going up as you said, long into the future, um, of which developing maritime industries is a fundamental part. So it's very important that we understand, for instance, that it's not just about making sure that African waters are free of crime or free of threats such as piracy. It's about making sure that they are also the sites of development and opportunity and livelihoods being increased or um, say new jobs being created. And under that is a very important recent initiative, which is the uh, Lomé Convention, sorry, the Lomé Charter, which was a, a meeting uh, last year in October, which I've done um, a, a two previous briefings on, which I say are available on YouTube if you want to catch up on those later, which um, together various countries produced a, a charter, a kind of a legally binding document, which is designed to create momentum and uh, a common driving force and goal for uh, for many African countries who signed it. There were 31 altogether. Um, and unfortunately, not many of the major ones, uh, major maritime countries such as South Africa or Egypt or uh, Mauritius signed. Um, so there's some interest there. We can discuss a bit more about why that charter is so important later. But I wanted to kick off by by pointing out that within regional organizations at the African Union level, national level, and, 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 and moving between them, there are a lot of maritime initiatives. The point of departure and the, and the most kind of um, the, the dominant discussion point is always producing maritime security. And by that, that's often taken to mean protecting ships from pirates. Now, obviously that is an important thing because the more we look into maritime security and maritime industries, we realize that here in Africa, but all around the world, we're very dependent upon shipping, delivering goods, importing and exporting without any kind of interruption um, as, as cheaply as possible. For instance, here we are, well, here I am in Pretoria, uh, quite far inland, very different from a, a coastal, coastal city where the ships would dock straight away. Those inland links always add costs to, uh, to, the, to the goods being dropped off in ports and then taken inland. And Africa has uh, many inland countries as well. So everyone has an interest in making sure that shipping is protected. But um, what we can see from perhaps constructing a, a maritime, African maritime history, is that um, the, the protection of shipping has been too dominant. Um, and while we are very focused on making sure that piracy is not a problem, longer term interests or longer term issues such as Will African navies be capable of, pre of preventing piracy in the future if it is to reoccur, but also other crimes to illegal fishing, uh, whether their kind of capacity has been increased and whether um, in the future organizations will be capable of uh, keeping maritime on the agenda. 
Unfortunately, um, I think you might tell from my tone already, my, my answers are tending towards slightly more pessimistic and, and less hopeful. Um, this is playing out against a background, of, a background of some very ambitious ideas contained within those maritime strategies, which I uh, showed the logos of earlier. Um, Africa has a lot of work to do, shall we say. There's a lot of problems, such as piracy, legal fishing, border conflicts, the create the um, creation of um, regional communication mechanisms so information can be shared. Um, a lot of countries and um, places have these a lot more well developed. And Africa is, um, most African states are very, um, lack the capacity to introduce these. So right from the get-go, we're looking at a situation where African countries don't have the capacity, the problems are very great and, uh, and transnational as well. So in effect, it's everybody's problem. And uh, increasingly, I think with international partners and capacity building organizations, there's a preference for what we call bilateralism, just directly dealing between state to state. So a European country will deal with an African country, um, relative isolation to, to other countries, whereas maritime security is seen, particularly in Africa, as a very broad transnational uh, idea. Um, as I say, pirates, uh, fishing vessels and maritime criminals, for instance, um, drug traffickers who use the seas to transport goods, or their, their goods, um, can move very easily between borders. Um, there isn't much in the way to stop them. And that's the same in most other countries as well. The, uh, the sea is huge. I, don't, I shouldn't need to say that. The sea is absolutely massive. And the ability to um, understand and monitor and be aware of everything going on on the seas is, is not easy. Um, so the various frameworks and policies which partners on a bilateral level, but also internationally, mostly to fight piracy, have to be assessed about how have they been aligned with and benefited or been in support of African needs and interests. Um, what we can often see is that rather than provide this long-term, more holistic maritime security idea, um, there's an assumption of African incapability. Um, it's often taken as given that, um, that uh, African strategies are in existence but aren't being implemented. And unfortunately, that uh, has a lot of uh, validity. Um, implementation is rather lacking, but that doesn't mean that um, initiatives were uh, doomed to fail from the start. Um, first, I'd like to, well, I'd like now to, to, to be a bit more clear about what is threatening Africa. I've mentioned in passing piracy and illegal fishing, but uh, piracy does present a problem if it is prevalent. It does impact upon development. For instance, um, uh, the costs of importing and exporting are driven up. So consumers and, and government governments lose out on revenue from ports because, for instance, insurance premiums for ships transiting an area where pirates exist increases. Um, so they're less likely to go to what's seen as a more dangerous area and pick a, a safer port. Um, so there's a, a great deal of, of lo um, missing out. Um, illegal fishing is certainly a, a major problem, more so than we realize. Uh, migration and trafficking, depending on, let's say, the framing when it comes to migration, is, is something which uh, safety of life at sea needs to be more of a, um, an interest. And toxic waste dumping is often mentioned as a, a major problem for African maritime security, in the sense that um, ships will dump their medical waste or various kinds of waste in African waters because there's nobody there to prevent that from doing that. Um, but the biggest threats for me, in a long-term or perhaps trying to be strategic sense, are the um, um, whether maritime African networks are being enhanced, whether African maritime cooperation is being enhanced. Uh, the reason being is that given there are so many African countries who share the same problems but have limited resources to devote to preventing crimes and, and, and increasing security, uh, that an answer is to tackle transnational problems by creating transnational solutions, joint patrols, joint um, regional coordination centers, and uh, communication centers as well, and information sharing. Now that is coming through in bits and pieces. It's quite nascent, shall we say. It's, it's emerging still, but often we see it's not as well-developed as we'd like, and, um, and often that's due to a lack of support 
from regional um, international partners, but often problems stemming from African countries themselves, a, a lack of interest in the maritime domain. And that's often because land problems are very prevalent. And when I say land problems, I mean inland countries, if there's a, a conflict, for instance, in South Sudan, that uh, regional attentions have to focus on creating stability because of a problem that's happening uh, on land. At sea, as soon as it's put it this way, it's over the horizon. It's not really very visible. Um, uh, radar and things can pick up all manner of ships there, but we don't, often don't know what they're doing or or whether, what kind of uh, activities they're undertaking. So um, African interest is often very minimal in, in maritime security and maritime development. So the idea is to try and boost it, firstly by combining and pooling capacity, but also creating kind of new concepts and ideas and, and, and getting people to realize how crucial maritime security, maritime development, and, and safe maritime transport and trade is uh, at pre in present and in the future. Um, this is perhaps what we kind of call uh, idea of human security, a broader and deeper understanding, which is not just, as I say, about protecting one thing, one what we call referent when we talk about security, which is often when it comes to piracy, commercial fishing, but also when it comes to states, it's about protecting state security from other states. If I could throw out an idea here, it's, I don't think many people can imagine an African country fighting another African country in a kind of a naval war. Um, firstly, because the, um, the tools aren't just there. Some, uh, secondly, the kind of motives aren't, aren't there to the extent we might imagine. And what I by, mean by that is triggers for conflict. Um, we might see some in the future, boundaries, for instance, as a, a source of um, conflict, especially when oil and oil gas, oil and gas is involved. But, uh, but like I say, creating the kind of um, solutions which are, are non-traditional, using the kind of tools we possess now, but in, in more innovative ways or, or ways to, to address the problems that exist um, every day, which are often not, not seen as very important. Again, I refer to or return to the problem of illegal fishing being quite important there. Um, some people might ask, why, why focus on piracy if you don't want to really have piracy being the focus for the future? Um, and what I'm talking about here is, is using piracy as a window into a broader understanding. Um, it's a broader issue, maritime security in Africa. Um, like I say, it's assumed a very piracy-focused approach, but it's more than that. It's, it's how we're going to cre create the kind of futures in the documents mentioned earlier, where they talk of 2050 and 2063. And of course, it's that, that's very far in the future, but we need to be building incrementally towards that now. And, uh, and as we'll go through the conversation and the presentation, perhaps we'll see that uh, there might be some areas to build upon, but also areas around piracy and fighting piracy, which are detracting from those kind of long-term visions and long-term achievements. Um, in addition to those African um, uh, organizations and the agency from Africa, there is a lot of international um, mechanisms and tools and capacity which need to be discussed because they're always in a kind of a, a change now. Um, to give some just some quick background, uh, piracy from 2010 and 11 was very prevalent and over the last six years, it has declined quite dramatically that we know of. And but what I mean by that is that we're often dependent on um, victims of piracy reporting that they have either escaped from pirates um, or have uh, managed to uh, prevent them boarding. Um, and often then, if a successful hijacking uh, occurs, that um, the pirates themselves have issued a demand for a ransom or uh, reported it. Um, so that has declined a great deal when the target has been commercial shipping, big oil tankers, big cargo vessels. What we often don't hear of, but we hear more anecdotally, is fishing vessels, smaller fishing vessels, smaller coastal um, shipping um, are often the victims of crime. And that's been a, a long-term thing. And, uh, and whether that is, is still being a problem, it's very hard to get information um, do research in, in Somalia still on, on these kind of things. Um, it's not the safest area and uh, uh, 
to, to do long-term field work. So often the information is just not there yet. So we're often discussing things from a not a good, not as good a perspective as we would like. Um, I mentioned a few. Um, the Djibouti Code of Conduct is the first one. Um, it's an, an initiative which was um, steered initially by the International Maritime Organization, the United Nations Maritime Organization, um, to create within the um, Western Indian Ocean, so um, the, um, the Arabian Peninsula and every African country uh, which borders the Indian Ocean, um, to battle against piracy by creating centers and, and networks and trust to share information. So for instance, often information is not shared because it creates a very negative impression about that country. Um, so for instance, if a country is seen as a very piracy vulnerable space, um, insurance companies will um, declare that, that any person who'd like to buy insurance premiums from them, well, the, the cost will be increased. Um, and often that um, countries are nat unfortunately naturally distrustful, it seems, of their neighbors. So there's always been a reluctance to share information because it's seen as giving somebody an advantage. Now, piracy is a means of breaking through that reluctance because it was a common problem. It's a historical problem. It's been the problem for thousands of years, piracy. But, but here, um, over the last 10 years, it became a very um, dire situation for a lot of countries. Uh, for instance, Kenya, the tourism trade suffered a, a, had a huge knock because um, some people were hide, well, kidnapped straight from beaches and hotels and taken to Somalia. And it was seen as um, something which is going to really have a tremendous structural impact on economies. Uh, the Djibouti Code was piracy focused in the beginning and set up centers in Tanzania, Yemen and Kenya to share information and uh, proceeded very, very well. But it was always a struggle to get regional buy-in and especially to say, break it beyond piracy. This is old kind of problem of a, a paradox of charities where a charity effectively needs to not exist anymore to be successful. So you're always trying to, on one hand, um, remove yourself or destroy yourself in a way by being successful. It's, it's a strange kind of concept to do. But so what a lot of people realized was that the kind of tools and mechanisms the Djibouti Code initiated uh, had applicability to other crimes um, such as illegal fishing because that was a common problem as well and um, it was also going to be a long-term problem and so over the last two years the GPT code has been revised and, and kind of almost relaunched to be a more broader idea and that's very positive and um, like I say Africa hosts two centers and is, is quite um, engaging in that so that's a, that's always a positive thing to track um, other developments around piracy have been perhaps less negative, I'm um, sorry, less positive, um, particularly around international patrols. NATO has uh, recently um, stopped patrolling against uh, pirates off the Horn of Africa. Um, <clears throat> and um, in one respect, that's a, a positive sign. It shows that uh, the, the risk is reduced and it's, the need to undertake those patrols is, is not so prevalent anymore. But on the other hand, it, it also comes with a kind of a, an additional thing where, um, should we say that on the, on the two sides of the same coin, that pirates are potentially going to be resurgent, that the threat is increasing again. Um, so to balance that out is not very easy in terms of having success uh, by reducing piracy by patrolling and also then warning that it's going to be a problem again if patrolling stops. That will take us back to my original question about why piracy dominates the discussions, because what I will argue is, or what I have been arguing for a long time as well, is that piracy was an opportunity to have a broader discussion about navies um, creating maritime security, uh, the absence of crime and the, the opportunities for maritime development in African waters, and how short-term results dominated. It was about patrolling and reducing the, the in number of reported incidences. It was not about what in 20 years time will be the preferred kind of African naval capacity. How much will African countries be cooperating with each other in pooling that capacity I mentioned earlier? And also then being able to not be so dependent or vulnerable 
to international partners intervening or patrolling in waters. Um, so the, the reduction in the NATO patrol is an opportunity to kind of reassess that and say, are we, are we going to be victims of piracy again, a, a resurgence? That's one question. But the broader question is, the kind of tools that have been left in place, the training, the um, partnerships, which NATO countries as well as other countries are still engaged in, are, is that creating the kind of African capacity, um, in, a, in a sense, to take over, but also uh, more in a sense to um, to to not have to come back again, um, to to not once again paint there is a lack of capacity in that region to fight piracy. Therefore, we will need to intervene in the region or to. Um, have a base or to patrol there. Um, I mentioned earlier that often African incapability is assumed, but I hope perhaps that the um, kind of paradox or contradiction is occurring that there has been a lot of African efforts um, regionally and, and nationally to create the um, strategies and ability to be better at increasing maritime security, but um, we haven't really seen that seized upon and, and, and taken up. Um, there's a few initiatives which are um, over the next couple of years we should see re-emerging. Uh, there were three Sea Power for Africa symposiums in um, in mid 2000s. Uh, very good initiatives of bringing together African chiefs of navies, African naval staff to discuss common problems with international partners as well. Um, unfortunately, the previous one was supposed to take place in Senegal in 2013, but was cancelled and um, has recently, as far as I know, been uh, rescheduled to take place here in South Africa in 2019. Um, it's a bit of a gap, unfortunately. There was some momentum lost there. And now when the new symposium gathers to meet, um, it's very important to kind of prevent the, um, to have piracy on one hand, like say one side of the coin, but have the broader understanding of where do we want to go in the next 20 years as African navies and African partners. Um, to create maritime security. So the job of navies may be in, the f in, in one sense to, to fight piracies, but the primary thing was always to fight other navies, um, by which I mean that um, creating that kind of naval force in one respect to fight piracy needs to have a kind of a multi-purpose aspect, like the Djibouti Code of Conduct had a multi-purpose aspect attached to it eventually. African capacity needs to be enhanced, but also needs to be enhanced in the areas where long-term threats will be fight, uh, fought. Um, Africa is really battling, um, should we say, often with itself. There's, a, like I say, a lack of interest at member state level, often because of sea blindness, because of it's seen as better at dealing with it bilaterally, of, of focusing on problems at that level and not trying to create a kind of an overarching coordination structure at the African Union, the kind of leadership, um, to make sure that any kind of real initiative, to, to just advise that any kind of initiative is aligned, is coordinated, is in a kind of a common interest. Um, unfortunately, that's that's a struggle. The African Union is an ideal place to have this kind of leadership and this kind of driving force situated. But um, at, at present, the African Union lacks any kind of maritime coordinator, mar a maritime person within the African Union um, with the kind of gravitas and 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 links and ability to um, to get countries together to discuss long term issues such as how do we overcome our mistrust and cooperate with each other and also do we put resources and money into regional and joint cooperative fun, uh, ventures now as you can tell I'm very um, um, from my research I believe that is the best way forward for a long term security and strategies is to create that kind of coordinated, collaborative, joint um, pooling idea. Um, but as I say from, from, from the member state level, it's often lacking, uh, support and interest is quite lacking. And from, from the other side, from international partners, the kind of lack of support of African initiatives and the favoring of um, narrowly focused counter piracy initiatives means that capacity building and support and the acceptance often or the ownership of, um, of African initiatives in, in its in effectively creating its own security is, is, is unfortunately very lacking. Piracy was taken often, like I say, in, in, in isolation from other incidences um, of crime. So for instance, piracy is, um, pirates have 
entered into other maritime crimes trafficking. Often it's been reported that former piracy groups um, who often claim to be motivated by a, the lack of anybody to help them and therefore they kind of in a kind of a Robin Hood um, looking after themselves kind of way um, went to sea to prevent illegal fishing and such crimes. Um, often it's been reported that those kind of groups because they are very capable seamen and seafarers and have the skills um, end up protecting the people they went to go fight in the first place, illegal fishing. It's, um, it's, it's like piracy creates the kind of skilled pool of people who have the ability to go do other maritime initiatives, uh, say initiatives, crimes often, um, but also just that, um, that uh, um, say because it was so ice, um, narrowly focused and isolated that the broader problems haven't been, haven't been focused on enough. Um, tackling poverty and undevelopment, for instance, the big, or rather the common refrain we often hear throughout all real documents and discussions is, we tackle piracy at sea, but the real solutions are on shore. And that effectively means, because I uh, perhaps I didn't spell out well enough in the beginning, I have been focused mostly on the Horn of Africa. I haven't discussed um, West Africa too much at the moment. That um, the, um, the kind of uh, poverty and underdevelopment and insecurity in Somalia is, is what people are always saying needs to be um, tackled to prevent piracy in a long-term sense. But Apart from, there are some capacity building initiatives, some help to the Somali authorities. And that doesn't just mean the central Somali authority in, in Mogadishu. But um, what, what you can see when you look at Somalia very often is that people create their own security. It doesn't necessarily depend upon having a state do it. If, if there is an absence of a state, people will still create their own security and, and stability. So there are areas where People created the kind of governance structures which are effectively like a state, but aren't recognized as a state elsewhere. Those have been very successful in fighting piracy, um, rejecting this, um, say, a criminal element, but also the disruptive influence it brings. But um, the degree to which they have perhaps received support and, uh, uh, and been appreciated for their efforts has is, is not really come through very much. It's, it's not very clear still how their creation of stability is, is, um, is, is supported when, for instance, piracy is, I say, the main focus for so many efforts. Um, I say good capacity building is occurring. Uh, the United Nations, various agencies, the uh, United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime does, does great technical capacity building work, the IMO, so too, with various African navies and countries. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's not creating that kind of more strategic alignment within Africa. Uh, it's often, like I say, on a bilateral basis, and it's not really always connected to other neighboring needs. It's not creating that kind of broader strategic buy-in and ownership from African countries. And it's also not creating that kind of perhaps naval, should we say maritime policy change, which needs to occur. African countries often have a, a kind of a maritime department or a maritime ministry, um, but it's not as, well capacitated, it's not as well enabled as it can be to monitor shipping to um, ensure that if a threat occurs, a navy can be quickly sent out, or if it's a regional problem or a, a bilateral problem uh, with a, a neighbor, to ensure that they can also engage in, a, in encountering it. That kind of big shift is, is staggering slightly, is stagnating slightly. It's when we just don't see the, the kind of um, the support, perhaps tripping over my words here, the support for African initiatives and African strategies to be implemented, to have activities, meetings, uh, joint operations and exercises, new offices to be created to encourage maritime development, but also encourage or sustain maritime interest beyond just fighting, I say, piracy. Um, a critical reading of, of piracy statistics, I, I don't have any to uh, present as such at the moment, but a critical reading does suggest that the problem often lies very close to Africa's shores. Piracy is an international crime, by which I mean that technically or legally, an act of piracy only occurs on the high seas, 12 nautical miles away from your coastline. Uh, within that 12 nautical mile band, you have um, 
uh, you classify it as armed robbery at sea, it's effectively no different as it happened on shore. It's the police or the, the authorities' responsibility to fight. And you look at the, uh, the reported data, which is often reported as piracy, so you would assume it happened on the high seas, around 40 to 50 cent almost of instances often just occur within ports. And it's often a petty theft, uh, the theft of some rope, or somebody climbed on board, was scared off, and then, and then ran away. That is entered into a lot of databases and uh, as an act of often piracy, because it's not, like I say, well classified. And, and for a long time as well. So if you look on the International Maritime Bureau's um, data databases, you'll see, for instance, the United Kingdom, because uh, of an incident of armed robbery in a port, South Africa as well, which um, they weren't, when they were reviewed, could be properly reviewed acts of piracy, they were armed robbery. Um, so better implementation of port security codes, um, recommendations for securing ports and harbors, because those are going to increase as well. With more African trade in the future, we're going to need more ports and harbors. We're going to need more African shipping. So making sure that that's protected and that's efficient and safe is a big priority. Here's a, here's a slide the ISS has produced, which is just facts which I'll leave up now for the rest of the presentation. Um, just to just give an idea of, say, we're kind of lacking. So, many, so few African countries are engaging in maritime, broader maritime activities. But we have such a you know, tight, like the 1.2% of the world's fleet, such a long coastline, so many people with inland who depend upon you know, better maritime trade. But that needs to be more of a focus in the future, about creating what we call a blue economy. Um, I mentioned just now about having maritime industries and, and ministries and, and organizations who are, who are looking at African seas and waters and, and seeing it not as a source of threats, but as a source of opportunities and often joint opportunities as well. If an oil and gas field is, uh, has a border splitting it, that's not a case of like, let's gerrymander the border to, um, to make it better suit our needs. It's about, right, well, oil and gas and borders is, is, a, is historically a source of conflict. Let's get around that by, by trying something new, by having joint development, about making sure we all benefit to an extent. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, there is a long way to go, though. Right? Like I, say, I started off by, by mentioning there was a bit of pessimism and, and not, not so much optimism, but, but when we like say perhaps look afresh at the kind of um, organizations, mechanisms, tools, and capacity we've, we've benefited from or created to effectively fight piracy, we realize that they have more purposes than just piracy. They can be used for patrolling um, against various other threats. And in a long-term sense as well, because as you see, the results, if you take it a short-term result of reduced piracy, then of course, if that's your, that's your goal, um, you can say mission accomplished. But actually the mission was so much longer than that. It was long-term, it was broader human security focus. And it was about getting or helping Africa, um, not in the sense of giving handouts, but, um, but helping them out with their own needs, identifying their own needs and areas of areas of priority and then giving more support and encouraging other people to do that too um, so that for me is a, a long-term solution not just to piracy but also for all manner of maritime problems that will happen in the future